first-time visitor to Guernsey will probably arrive with some very preconceived ideas of what he or she will see. An attractive coastline, without doubt. Expensive yachts, probably. Quality tomatoes, yes, of course. Numerous greenhouses, certainly. Guernsey cows, that's for sure. But after a stay on this lovely island, you, the visitor, will almost certainly return home with some different and very lasting memories. This video aims to provide a souvenir capturing some of the places, the faces, the things to see and do that make Guernsey the relaxing island. Guernsey is not a large island. There are no motorways or bypasses. Instead, lovely country lanes, cliff walks, and above all, beautiful, often spectacular coastline abound. But although Guernsey is a relaxing island, it will also provide the holiday maker with many interesting things to see, and if you feel energetic, things to do. The sands at Vazon Bay provide an ideal venue for a rather unique form of racing, assuming the tide is out, of course. It is fun to take part in, but it's also a fun spectator sport for young and old alike. These sand races for both motorbikes and cars attract enthusiasts from far and wide. They're held many times a year. 
although the entries have to fit into special categories, it would seem that they come in many guises. But whatever the vehicle, one thing is certain, nothing will be taken for granted, and always the driver will appreciate that little bit of good luck. There is also racing of a different kind to be found along the coastline of Guernsey, and it's equally fascinating to watch. The lovely bays of the island are ideal for the sport of windsurfing. It's a sport visitors to Guernsey may even try for themselves, for sailboards are easily available for hire. But windsurfing is not so easy as it looks. It takes quite a bit of experience before you can say that you really mastered it. But once mastered, it's a joy to do and a joy to watch. the Butterfly Center at Le Frique. In this attractive setting, established in 1977, the visitor can wander among fountains, bushes, trees and flowers to enjoy the eye-catching exotic butterflies and moths from many parts of the world in a natural environment. Colorful species with colorful names, golden birdwing, great blue swallowtail, painted lady, clouded yellow, silver studded blue, all beautiful to the eye and the photographer's lens alike.
color of a different kind. The rich, fascinating images created at Guernsey Candles. In a 17th century farmhouse, the visitor can watch these individual pieces being handmade. Fun candles, startling candles, impressive candles, artistic candles, all reflecting artistry in wax. But Guernsey craftsmanship doesn't stop at artistic candles. Many other crafts can be found on the island. At the Oatlands Craft Centre, for example, the visitor will see the results of such skills as pottery, jewellery, patchwork, glassmaking and engraving. In an age when many artistic goods are produced to an identical automated design, Oatlands reflects the individuality resulting from the craftsman's skill. The glassmaker, for example, has a feel for how the molten glass moves and handles. His experienced eye is always assessing the point at which he reacts to form the shape that will catch your eye in the showroom. Many of the items on display at craft centres throughout Guernsey reflect the history and life of the island and inevitably 
the influence of the sea. On an island only 25 square miles large, one is never far from the sea, and the great variety of boats used for a great variety of reasons. But memorable as the Guernsey coastline is, the visitor will certainly not forget the views of the soothing Guernsey countryside. Gentle, undulating fields provide the setting for the famous golden Guernsey cows to browse in. These docile animals produce the rich butterfat, which has made Guernsey a worldwide name. The Guernsey cows are not the only attraction, though. Exploring the winding country lanes reveals the distinctive cottages, houses, and the many hamlets throughout the island, places which impress upon one the feeling of relaxation and a way of life influenced by the beauty and colour of nature which surrounds them.
Guernsey is an island made up of ten parishes, each parish with its own distinctive church, each church with its own fascinating history. Among them, the parish church of Vale, of St. Peter's, of Torteval, and of St. Peter Port. But none can be more unique, more intriguing, more bizarre than the smallest chapel in Europe, Les Vaux-Billettes. Built by a monk early this century as a labor of piety, this unique structure of stones, shells, china, clinker, and mortar provides the religious sanctuary for just six persons at any one time, truly deserving of the title, The Little Chapel. architecture of a different kind, with a very different history. The forts and castles of Guernsey. Some just ruins, others preserved and painstakingly restored. All are interesting places to visit and to photograph, like Fort Grey. The local nickname of the Cup and Saucer belies its function today as a maritime museum. Other forts and castles which form prominent landmarks around the island are often set in picturesque surroundings, helping to make them even more distinctive. Vale Castle, Fort Homet, Fort Richmond, Fort Pesare. And, of course, throughout the island are those very prominent Martello Towers. 19th century fortifications, which stand today as a reminder of conflicts past. But pride of place to these garrisons of old must go to Castle Cornet, a lone sentinel overlooking the harbour of St. Peter Port. Its battlements and towers are now a scene of peace and tranquility. A far cry from the turbulent scenes of hard-fought battles which have raged over the centuries. The only sound of battle the visitor will hear today is the noonday gun, fired not in anger, but with all pomp and ceremony. Over the centuries, the occupants of Castle Cornet have been many and varied. From its early days as a wooden castle in the 13th century to the stone structure of today, Castle Cornet has served its role well as the chief fortification of Guernsey and of the harbour town of St. Peter Port.
The visitor to St. Peter Port will be impressed by the attractiveness of this lovely harbour capital town. Developed from the small fishing village of many years ago, St. Peter Port still maintains much of its earlier quaintness and character. Traffic-free cobbled streets. Tiers of colourful houses rising up the hillside on which the town has been developed. And of course a harbour with its multitude of seagoing craft, both large and small. Working boats, boats carrying cargo, cross-channel ferry boats, Boats for pleasure, and inevitably the boats of the Guernsey fishermen. Overlooking the harbour is the finest church in Guernsey. This town church, dating back to 1048, is often referred to as the Cathedral of the Channel Islands with excellent examples of 12th, 13th, and 15th century church design. Wandering back into the market square behind the church, one can also wander back in time. Here, once a week, the old Guernsey market presents an interesting display of many of the long-established arts and crafts still practiced on the island today. Selling from their candy-striped stalls, the local men and women, dressed in traditional Guernsey costume, keep alive a market that has existed for many years past. Further up the hillside, still in St. Peter Port, a further example of a way of living in years past is presented by a visit to Hauteville House. Here the famous 19th century writer, Victor Hugo, lived for 14 years. His home, personal belongings of over 100 years ago, are now preserved, just as he left them, as a memorial to him. Not far away, in the gardens of the Candy Museum, stands the impressive, larger-than-life statue of this famous French writer. At the base of this action-inspired statue are carved the words expressing the affectionate regard in which the island of Guernsey holds him. The strong impression Hugo made on the literary scene has resulted in his very distinctive image 
being promoted in many ways. Not surprising, therefore, that eminent artists of a different craft receive many commissions relating to this great man of the pen. John Le Measurer is one such craftsman. In the workshops of Guernsey woodcarvers, one is able to watch skilled hands transforming beautiful raw woods from the world's forests into shapes and items of impressive style and colour. artistry applied to a different medium, but no less impressive for that. In a splendid old Guernsey farmhouse set in attractive surroundings, Bruce Russell leads a team of craftsmen, each of whom applies his technique to producing works of art in silver and gold. from the traditional Guernsey can to ornate pieces for the finest home. The showrooms of these gifted gold and silversmiths display an impressive array of delightful items. Although Guernsey is a small island, it has become internationally recognized for numerous things over the years, but probably more so for its vegetable and dairy produce. The Guernsey tomato will appear on many a table in the UK and elsewhere. But a byproduct not yet found in many homes is the tomato wine produced and bottled at the Guernsey Tomato Centre. With export orders growing, this unique drink obviously has a strong appeal. However long the visitor stays in Guernsey, one thing is certain, he or she will return home with some very fond memories. Memories of interesting places, helpful, friendly people. The spectacular coastline, a peaceful, and colourful countryside. For without doubt, Guernsey is 
a relaxing island.